Welcome, welcome everybody. This is the third hour of power. My name is Grady of This Mormon Life, and with me this week is Kurt Frankham of Leading LDS. How's it going, Kurt? Well, thanks, Grady. It's good to be here. I'm so glad you invited me back. Yeah, yeah. Kurt's been our guest a few times. Uh, he's also a frequent guest on uh, the Sunday, Sunday School, School Bonanza. Bonanza. There we go. Uh, that is hosted by our benefactors, This Week in Mormons, but Kurt also has a podcast of his own called Leading LDS. Uh, Kurt, tell us just really quickly what L Leading LDS is and what people can find there. Sure. So I created Leading LDS. It was sort of just a blog or a website before uh, we added the podcast feature to it. But basically, I, it's a place for leaders in the LDS church to go and a platform to learn ideas, uh, home teaching tricks, uh, new approaches to visiting teaching, uh, today I did some interviews with a couple of Relief Society presidents, and I just talk about how they lead, um, so that and get it out there so that other leaders can listen to that, especially to incoming leaders that uh, really don't have a clue. We've all been there, and uh, they can maybe get a better uh, jump start to what uh, to their new calling. So it's it's a lot of fun, and and I just try to make it a powerful resource for uh, leaders in the in the church. Yeah, I've been in uh, in two Elders Quorum presidencies in the past few years, and uh, I definitely use it as a resource to help us oh, uh, sweet. our quorum. So cool. I appreciate what you do. Well, this week cool, we yeah. are in Chapter 20 of the Joseph Fielding Smith Manual, and it's love and concern for all our father's children. Uh, Kurt, do you want to start off in, this, in the uh, life from Joseph Fielding Smith? You had some notes there. Yeah, you know, he's got, he shares these great stories uh or I don't know if he shares them, but uh, there are accounts of, of his life. One was, uh, was when he was in the, uh, uh, an apostle, and a little boy got to the tabernacle early, sat on the front row, row was, was excited to be there and have a good seat. And then uh, as the tabernacle filled up, um, uh, I think a senator came. I don't know if he was a state senator or a U.S. senator, and uh, they asked the boy to give the seat to them, to him. And so... Uh, President Smith saw this and invited the boy to come up and sit next to him uh, with the rest of the apostles. And and then there's other stories of him buying a, a warm coat for a missionary, a uh, time when, when he was sustained as president of the church, and uh, he, he focused on a little girl who made her way up to, to shake his hand. And, and the reason that I think there's a great way to kick off this chapter of love and concern for all of Father's children is this is, again, going back to what I'm obsessed about is leadership— and this is truly pure leadership, is ministering to the one, finding opportunities to uh, pinpoint that person in the crowd and, and show them love. And, and that's really what makes a difference where, you know, he could have easily, as an apostle of this big church, just get caught up in the masses and trying to, it, it's hard to, to love the masses as much as is, is to love the individual. So I think it's a great, great introduction to the lesson. Yeah, well, and I love you bring, you bring up that idea of ministering. You know, with with every calling, there's going to be a, a degree of administering and a degree of ministering. And you know that yeah. usher, I think he had maybe a, an administration mindset of, here's a state senator, he's really important. Let's make sure he gets a seat. But he missed that side of the ministering where there was this boy, who who also needed to be there for him. And I think with as leaders, it's really important for us to understand and balance those two things to make sure that we are we are loving and serving those who we have stewardship over. Uh, in section one, it talks about uh, the knowledge we have, or having the knowledge that we're all children of our, our Heavenly Father, and how that kind of binds us together. Yeah, and I love the uh, where the quote in that section, it says, And so our belief in the dignity and destiny of man is an essential part, both of our theology and of our way of life. And I think this concept of love is... Ex extremely connected to the center of the gospel and I, of our theology, uh, the atonement of Jesus Christ. There's nothing more profound and, and paramount in, in the atonement than just pure love for that Christ had for each one of us. Yeah, and I think, you know, sometimes there's the idea that we're brothers in Christ when we, when we accept him as our Savior, which is true. But then there's that overarching brotherhood that we have of just, you know, being sons of our Heavenly Father, that we are, you know, spiritually literal 
brothers and sisters of each, of each other. I loved uh, just recently in general conference when Jeffrey R. Holland was giving his talk about caring for the poor and needy. And when he says, you know, I may not be my brother's keeper, but I am my brother's brother. And I think how important it is for us to make sure that we understand that, you know, these souls that are out there that either through our leadership callings or just be out there in the world, each one of these people is not only a child of our Heavenly Father and loved, but he's also our brother or our sister and that we should have that same love. Um, for our siblings that we have in our own families. Yeah, you know, the the title of, of that section heading is, uh, As we love and support one another in the church, we become a power in the world for good. And one thing I did is uh, crossed out the wor- word world and wrote in ward. <laughs> and I, I do that because, uh, you know, being a, a, a power in the world, that's obviously, you know, that that's a great goal. Um, it's motivating. But what individuals don't realize is what a power they can be in their ward or in their, you know, uh, workplace or in their family. And uh, I, I just interviewed on, on my podcast uh, Brad Wilcox, who wrote The Continuous Atonement, The Continuous uh, Conversion. And he talked about this concept of, you know, I may not be uh, the prophet of the church. I may not be an apostle. But I am a father. I'm a home teacher, and that's what kind of the the world that the Lord's given to me. And so I can be, I can be that the representative of Christ to that person. Um, just like uh, in in this section, they share the uh, John thirteen uh, thirty three through thirty four. Little children, uh, yet a little while I am with you, ye shall seek me. And as I am saying to, you, as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, ye can not come. So now I say unto you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And there, we don't need titles. We don't need to be the be the bishop to be the most loving, but we can have a, a power in our ward and in the world by by following just the simple commandment of striving to love. And, and like you said, Elder Holland shared a great message, especially that story told of President Monson of, of coming back from a trip you know, in his slippers because he'd given his, his shoes away. I think that, that was a great example. Yeah, and I love here the, the, that last section says that we ought not harbor feelings one against another, but have a feeling of forgiveness and of brotherly love and sisterly, sisterly love for one another. Uh, and how important it is that we are, you know, we're always just finding the best or, or at least thinking the best of intentions. One of the things that my, at my work right now, is kind of a, a big theme that's going through my department is the idea of assuming positive intent. The idea hmm. that someone may do something, you know, as you learn about the difference between sins and transgressions. You know, sometimes people transgress against you. They do things that cause you a disadvantage, cause you sometimes pain and hurt. But we need to realize that sometimes that person has no intention that that's what their actions are doing. You know, there's, yeah. there's the sin where you're willfully committing wrongdoings but we can't. We don't know everyone's hearts. It's only Heavenly Father who knows that. And so, one thing people do things that could be hurtful to us. We need to assume positive intent and think, you know what, that may have hurt me, but perhaps they had meant good. Maybe they were trying to do something nice, and it just yeah. totally backfired. And they have no idea yeah. that your feelings are hurt. And it's funny how human nature we almost go to the other extreme. We just assume the worst. Like I can't believe he did that to me. Like. He has such malice towards me. What's his problem, you know? But if we assume the best, we're more often than not, more often than not, we're right than when we assume the worst. So. Yeah, mankind is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The next section here that I love it talks about how we express love for our fellow men by serving them. And in the manual, there's this picture of this woman. She's in kind of a, those motorized carts, and there's another woman kind of helping her reach the fruit that that she can't get to. There was an interesting thing that happened to me on my mission. Everyone used to think that I worked at the grocery store. No matter where we were at, uh, people always would ask us for help finding things. And I had a companion, <laughs> you know, his, his just, just knee-jerk reaction. And someone says, oh, can you help me find where, you know, where deodorant is? And my companion's like, oh, we don't work here. And I, <laughs> and I, and I, said, I thought, I said, this is, is going to be a missed opportunity. I said, you right, know what? We they're don't. walking up to you. Yeah, I said, you know, we don't work here, but we've been sent to serve you. What can I help you find? That's cool. And she's like, I need to find deodorant. And I said, okay. And little they took my arm and we just walked and talked and we went to the deodorant section and helped her find what she needed. 
Um, and she was so helpful and happy. And she's like, are you sure you guys don't work here? And when I explained who we are and, you know, just kind of share that that's what we did. We, we were sent here to serve. We spent two years of our life to come to this community to help people have better, you know, have, have goodness. And uh, it was a good moment of just, just a sharing thing. And, you know, that, that same pattern is happening. Every time I go to the grocery store, people still think that I work there and ask me for things. And it's funny because sometimes people get mad at me because I don't know the answer. And uh-huh. I'm like, hey, I don't even work here. I'm just trying to help. And like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just got one of those faces that, that say, I work here. I yeah. Guess, so. <laughs> Please come talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So uh, let's see. We're in section four now, right? Yeah. So we need to appreciate and love people for themselves. This is a powerful principle, and it goes back again to, uh, relating to Elder Holland's uh, recent talk. Um and uh, really Elder Oaks as well. Um, but he, he tells a story, President uh, Joseph Fielding Smith tells a story about his horse named Junie, which is a fantastic name for a horse. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, this horse was quite intelligent that uh, no matter where he locked the horse up, it would always get out, it would untie him itself. And, and uh, they, they'd go to extreme measures to try and get this horse to stay um, you know, in the barn or wherever it is, and it kept getting out. And, uh, and it, but then he goes on to talk about how his mother was a midwife and would have to get up middle of the night. And um, it says, I, I would often wait in the buggy for mother. And then it was nice to have the company of a of gentle old Junie. This experience with the horse was very good for me because early in life I had learned to love and appreciate her for herself. She was a wonderful horse with only a couple of bad habits. And again, going back to what you said, where we sometimes assume the worst, it's naturally to, to force yourself to assume and focus on the good people um, is powerful, even as was talked about uh, in, in conference in many talks, where loving those that even have different opinions than us, that see the world different, that have different beliefs and uh, th- people who we consider are sinning, that uh, they consider are just living their life how they believe it to still show love and you'll find great um you know they have a great role in the world uh, even though they have a different lifestyle and a different perspective of beliefs than than we do yeah and it's a funny thing i mean i have you know been active in my community um when i lived in in fountain valley and trying to do better now here but we're still kind of getting acclimated but i met people from all walks of life and there are people of different faiths and people with no faith at all that were active and trying to help in their community. And a lot of the times the people that that really didn't have a faith of their own or, or didn't feel like there was a God were still super nice and genuine and, and still genuinely wanted to help and serve other people. And I think it's so important for us to, to see the good in others. You know, even though there may be things that we disagree with or things that we yeah. may feel like, you know, they, they missed the mark there, we should be focusing on all the things that we have in common. Um, with my blog, you know, I'm kind of online a little bit. Uh, people on the internet have very strong opinions about things, um, especially when it <laughs> yeah. comes to the church and religion. And so one of the things I've been trying to do is rather than trying to argue with people, trying to find, you know, poke holes in their ideas and, and solidify my own ideas, I've been trying really hard to find things that we both have in common and to be able to, like, you know, that, that build on common beliefs idea. I say, okay, yeah, yeah, you believe this. We also believe this. This is something we have in common. And uh, and it's been it's been a neat experience trying that instead of trying to you know prove one person wrong because I found that on the internet you're never going to convince anyone else to change their opinion but at least you can help them to understand yours better. Yeah, yeah. Arguing online just consumes your life and <laughs> your time, and you never nobody ever wins. <laughs> uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh. so. You know, one other thing too I think about this um, you know just kind of seeing the good. The one thing is I love the new hashtag that you're put out about sharing goodness um, and how mm-hmm. important it is for us to, even in, in bad situations, sharing good things. I loved Mr. Rogers when uh, he told the story about his mother when there was natural disasters that were occurring in the world and all these bad and, and horrible things that would happen. And his mom would tell him, you know, look for the helpers. You know, look for the helpers yeah. because no matter what tragedy you see, there's going to be people that are there trying to help. And, you know, we saw that that was a very big overarching theme when it came to like the attack on 9-11 where this horrible thing had happened but the story that really rang out was those first responders those people that ran into that burning building knowing that 
collapse was imminent, trying to get as many people out as they could. And that was that was the story of the day at, at the when it was all said and done. Not that we were attacked, not that there was lost life, but that they were heroes in the world that were willing to sacrifice and do what was right. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. And it goes back to it's simply love. I mean, the heroes, the reason we call heroes heroes is because of the uh, the overpowering love that they show in those times when it's needed most. Yeah. And, and Section 5 kind of kind of brings that up is that you know, as a result, we find harmony when we have a society that's like that. Yep. It's the answer to, to a lot of the world's problems is if we can figure out how to how to get a mutual love going throughout society, you know, then we'll actually um, talk from a perspective of, of problem solving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Kurt, anything else you want to add to this lesson this week? No, this is great. A, a great lesson that focuses on a very basic concept of, of the gospel, you know, simply love and charity. But are the examples that prophets and apostles uh, put out there and you see it throughout uh, church history is powerful and it's inspiring after you know I go through this lesson and study it uh, I'm reminded more of just doing the little things like you said be the guy in the grocery store that helps the old lady find deodorant <laughs> and the world's a, a better spot you know you don't need to wait for the the right guy that's paid to do these things to do it and uh, and it'll, it'll have a different so a great lesson yeah yeah i'm really excited for sunday when we uh, we have this and uh, hopefully you guys are too listening along with us hopefully we've given you some insights um, and ideas of things to share if you are very studious and listening to this before sunday i'd encourage you to find some time this week to do something a little bit more serve your fellow men do something nice for someone else so that you can be the hero that comes to class and says i have a story that fits right here in this subject we're talking about because um, teachers love that and people have experiences that support the, the, uh, the lesson. Yeah, that'd be great. Kurt, tell us a little bit more about where we can find you on the internet before we go. Yeah, the best place to go is uh, leadingLDS.com. And at the top of that page, there's a place you can join the, the Leading LDS community and get our newsletter and with, of all the episodes we do, the posts we put out. There's a lot of guest posting that happens there. So that's a good place to start is leadingLDS.com. Perfect, perfect. And uh, you can find more of my work on This Mormon Life. It's this-mormon-life.com. Uh, also, I'm over on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Instagram went crazy for General Conference. Um, so if you found us there, thank you very much. Or if you want to find us there, go on over. It's a great place to see what we're talking about, share some pictures of faith-filled stuff and my family sometimes. And also visit our benefactors, This Week in Mormons, for all the things that they do on the Internet particularly their awesome podcast. They just had a general conference recap. They talked about just about every talk and gave some insights on that. But this week they've got some new stories to check out. So find them on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever popular podcasts are found. And until next time, on behalf of Kurt, my name is Brady, and we bid you all a fond adieu. It's so amazing what we're all creating. It's like a symphony. Just keep listening And pretty soon you'll start To figure out your part Everyone plays a piece And there are melodies In each one of us Oh